Hi, my name is Ben Waldeck. Thanks for attending the uh, Trademarks uh, presentation I've got for you today. Uh, it's called Protecting Your Brand with Confidence. Just a little bit about myself first. I'm a commercial lawyer and also help businesses with protecting their IP, uh, including trademarks and also through to copyright and different aspects of technology, privacy, and also dispute resolution and litigation. So, Protecting Your Brand with Confidence, let's jump straight in and get started. So today, what I will be sharing is what is a trademark? We'll talk about the types of trademarks because people usually associate trademarks with logos and things like that, but obviously they can be a lot more than words, packaging. I'm going to go through all the different types of trademarks so you can get a good idea of uh, what you can protect in your business. We're going to cover the important aspects of trademarks. These are the things that you must know. We're going to talk about the registration requirements. These are the things you need to have uh, in order to gain registration. Um, and then we're going to go through some very practical steps on how you can register your own trademark. So looking forward to that. So let's talk about what is a trademark. I'm going to start with a broad, plain English definition to um, and then we'll narrow it down on the next slide. So a trademark is a badge of origin. It separates uh, businesses from one another in the marketplace as well as uh, services and goods. Uh, distinguishes brands as well uh, and it provides protection. And that protection is provided under the Trademarks Act 1995 in Australia. So the legal definition is a little bit more expansive. Under the Trademarks Act, it's actually defined as a sign. And a sign uh, is defined as a letter, word, name, signature, number, device, brand, heading, label, ticket, aspect of packaging, shape, color, sound, or scent. So uh, it covers a broad range of, of items that can be registered as a trademark. For instance, down here we see the Nike Swoosh. That is what's known as a device. The Qantas, here we can see the kangaroo in the tail fin. Uh, that's a rear stabilizer. That is... Um, uh, device uh, because this is stylized provided that Qantas owns the font that can be registered as a trademark um, the stylized font whereas a word can also be such as iPad a word can be registered by itself without any sort of logo let's say Oracle appears to have their own font so that would be registered as a trademark and could potentially protect the word Oracle uh, in uh, in regards to computer devices software but it also will protect that stylized font. Moving up here to Cadbury, uh, here's an example of a trademark color. Uh, that purple has been registered as a trademark and it went through a little bit of a, a litigation period uh, not so long ago and for a considerable amount of time. Cadbury was successful nonetheless in, in registering uh, that color violet. Down here we can see the Oh What A Feeling jump by Toyota. Toyota have registered that as an action. So what cannot be a trademark? Common sayings can't be trademarks, like good day, mate, or how's it going, uh, cannot be trademarks, literal terms, or certain emblems and insignias, they can't be trademarks, so uh, words like Anzac, things like that cannot be uh, incorporated into a trademark, or the names of places, so for instance, you can't trademark Sydney, um, and common family names. So there's many benefits that come with registering a trademark. Uh, Firstly, trademarks are assets, so you can actually put them on the balance sheet and they do increase the value of uh, businesses. They provide that unique ident identity for businesses, brands, and other products and services. It's renewable, and like a lot of other intellectual properties, such as patents and designs, where they have a specific period, a registration period after that it's over, uh, with trademarks, as long as you pay the fees and keep, it, um, keep using it, uh, ensure those fees are paid, and kept current, then you um, uh, can use that trademark to the exclusion of others or exclusively. So because it's an, because the trademark is an asset, it can be sold, licensed, and assigned as with any other type of intellectual property. So let's look at some important aspects. The registration time frame from filing is usually around six to eight months, probably a little bit more. The registration period is for 10 years from the date of registration. As I said, uh, mentioned earlier, it can be renewed as well, so indefinitely. IP Australia is a governing body. And we're going to go to the IP Australia website shortly, and we're going to go through the registration process. Uh, 
and the Trademarks Act is what governs trademarks in Australia. You might have seen these two uh, marks next to trademarks before, the R and the TM. The TM refers to a common law trademark or uh, any business or person can use this TM next to a, a word or a, a symbol to claim uh, ownership of that without registration and you're perfectly entitled to protect trademarks that aren't registered. However, to defend, uh, it gets quite costly. I never recommend not registering a trademark. Uh, that's a subject for another presentation. Uh, with the R in the circle, uh, you can once registered, you can use it on your logo or, or trademark uh, to inform the public that it's registered. It's actually an offence to use that unless it is registered. So just be aware of that as well. So let's look at trademark classes, which is short for classifications. There are 45 trademark classes and they're broken up into goods and services. So when you register a trademark, you've got to nominate for what goods or services are you seeking protection under. You can't claim a trademark for everything. So pre-registration tips, a good place to start is Google. And the reason why you start with Google is you need to look at um, common law trademarks that might not be registered on the IP Australia database. So common law trademarks will be businesses that carry on, as I said before, haven't registered the mark officially. So if you don't do this part and you go ahead and register, these people can come out of the woodwork and say, say oppose your trademark application. And so it's a good idea to get on the front foot and find out who may object um, and what could cause conflict in the future. Obviously, you want to try and register uh, a trademark that's really unique and distinguishable. So first off is Google, and then you can search the trademarks register on IP Australia, and you can also research WIPO. In fact, let's go and take a look at those now. I'm going to show you how to search the trademark register and uh, research WIPO as well, the World Intellectual Property Organization and their global brand database. Uh, so you can see if there's any conflicting marks. Because if you register a trademark in Australia, you may wish, especially if you're an online business or something like that, you may wish to um, expand into other regions if you want to sell in that area. Of course, I'm a lawyer and I'm going to say it's best to get legal advice from someone qualified to do so because it can save a whole lot of pain and down the track. Um, there's lots of things that can go wrong. I'll show you that some of the pitfalls as we go through some of the search processes through IP Australia, through WIPO, and you'll get a good idea of where it can get a little bit murky. So let's go ahead and uh, check out some of the research that we can perform before we register. And to do that, we're going to use the fictional company or the, the trademark that we want to register called Technico. And the fictional company is a uh, technology consulting services company. So we, we're going to go through doing the cert preliminary searches through Google, the classification searches, the search through IP Australia, and the global brand database, because Technico wants to expand overseas. So we're going to look at some uh, obstacles, threats, uh, and risks along the way. So let's get started. So let's type in Technico and just do a search for Technico in Australia. So what we've got here is modular fencing and noise barriers, Technico, that doesn't seem to... Um, infringe on technology services. We've got Technico, LLC. We've got, this is actually a consulting and management technology firm. I took a look at it earlier and it's more to do with software development, but it's definitely within the class in which we want to register it in, in America. So that's something to consider. This is not registered as a trademark in the United States. So they could very well object now you'd have to get specific advice in relation to this, but this would be a definite risk that a lawyer would flag. Technico, although it's spelled differently, phonetically the same, important point. If they sound the same, it can and often will block um, your registration if it's in the same class. But fortunately, this is in coffee services, uh, Technicola, bonding agents and, and adhesives. Um, Walmart Group has launched a new product, Technico. So that's modular wall panel. So this is uh, one from Israel. So it doesn't look like it's going in to impede us too much. You may wish to dig a bit deeper. Look. Look at products. But for now, that's okay for the purposes of this exercise. So let's move on to the classification search. So we'll just type in trademark classification search into Google. You'll find the link. And we want to look for technology we do a search for technology for goods and services we want to provide services we want to do consulting um, so obviously it's going to be under services um, 
let's have a look. Information technology, perfect. Information technology consultancy relating to installation and maintenance and repair of computer hardware. That's exactly what Tec Technico does. So we want to look out for class 37 because we want to register in that class. Let's go ahead now. Go to Google, type in trademark search and the first listing that comes up, search.ip Australia, quick search. You can click on that link and what we want to do is type in Technico in here to see if there's any competing marks and there's one. There's one competing mark, again, goods and services building. So this is consistent with Walmart. So this is consistent with what we've seen on Google. Uh, so this is registered, so we need to stay away. Class 6, class 19. And that's it, class six and class 19. So uh, the, the classification we want is class 37, which is great. Uh, so that's a, that seems available. Now, let's go to um, the global brand database. I'll just show you how to get there. As you can imagine with the last ones, we just did a search for uh, in Google for, I'll show you right now, global brand database. And this is the uh, WIPO. Uh, database of global brands because one thing about uh, the directors of uh, Technico is they want to expand into the United States so we access the global brand database to check if the United States um, if there's any conflicting marks there so we go Technico and do a search so as you can imagine there could be a few this shows the one on IP Australia uh, that we've just looked at class 6 and 19 okay so they're registered in class 19, I can't read that, it's obviously in German, so let's have a look at the classification search. So the classification search, 19 materials, not of metal for building and construction, rigid pipes, etc. So it looks like we're in the clear. So the next thing we want to do, and I didn't put on the slides, but I should have, is to check the domain names. Let's check to see if Technico is available as a domain name, Technico. And as you can see, technico.com.au redirects uh, to that product. So it's not so much a business that's protected as a trademark, it is actually uh, a product. So that may be a, uh, because the domain's gone, that, that's a factor to consider whether or not you want to register Technico. You can look at extensions like technicoservices.com or technico IT. So you can workshop that and try alternate domain names, it depends. Uh, it depends all on your strategy. So these thing, steps that we've gone through, we've gone through the Google search, we've gone through the classification search, we've gone through the global brand database search, and we've gone through domain name searches. These are some of the factors that you may want to get advice on from a qualified lawyer before you go ahead and go through the pains of registration uh, of the trademark, which may get knocked back. So it's a few things to think about. That's a that's a general process. There are a few more steps, but I've kept it to the basics for the purposes of this presentation to show you how you can do it if you wish. So now what we want to do is we're comfortable. Let's say we've decided to go ahead and register Technico as a as a trademark. So what you can do is go to uh, portal.ipaustralia.gov.au forward slash login. And as you can see on my screen here, you can click register to register an account uh, and you'll be taken to this screen. Uh, I've already done that, so I'll just quickly log in so I can show you through the registration process. The registration process is fairly straightforward. So now that we've logged in, uh, we're looking at the dashboard in IP Australia, so we can go to trademarks and we can go to apply or a standard trademark. As you can see, these are all the types of trademarks that we covered in the presentation. So uh, this is just a reminder of what you need. You need trademark details, the owner and the agent. The agent is a lawyer if one is representing you. And of course, the payment method. So that's so all you do is start a, a trademark trademark application. Uh, you click on word or phrase if you want to do a word or phrase, or you can do a logo without text. That's good advice. Uh, so let's put in our, uh, I might do an uppercase, tech, Okay. Perfect. Next. Does your trademark contain any non-English words or characters? No, it doesn't. Is it a divisional application? No, it's not. Uh, enter a keyword. So we already know it's 37, but we'll type it in anyway. 
We do a search for technology and all the classes for goods and services that we loaded out before have come up on the left hand side. So we simply scroll down to uh, uh, IT services in class 37. We may wish to select both of those uh, and then we can continue. Are there any conditions, conditions or limitations to the registration of this mark? No, we'll go next. Uh, is it a conditions or limitations? No, is this a defensive mark? No, it's for pretty much for larger companies uh, to register in classes to protect their uh, fairly prominent and recognized trademarks. Um, is it a collective mark? No, for instance, is it part of like, for, ex for example, like something like Scouts Australia? Is it, do you want to claim a convention priority for this mark? That's where it's been already registered overseas. And you want to claim the priority date, uh, that is the following date that it was registered overseas. No, we don't because we haven't registered overseas. Um, and then we can add our contact details. So fairly straightforward. And then you go through next, add the agent, which can be a lawyer uh, if you choose to appoint one. And then uh, it's complete, you have your payment, it's, um, it's done, it's submitted. And then you wait for the trademark examiner to process your application. So let's talk about international registration. WIPO or the World Intellectual Property Organization is the global organization that's dedicated to promoting and protecting intellectual property worldwide. Uh, it administers international treaties, including the Madrid Protocol and the Nice Agreement, and it facilitates IP registration, policy development, and also cooperation between countries. And the Madrid Protocol is an international treaty that allows trademark owners to file a single application to protect their trademarks in multiple countries. It's really an efficient and cost-effective way to register trademarks in multiple countries. I'm going to show you how to do that really soon. And the NICE classification is an international uh, classification system for goods and services for the purposes of registering trademarks. And we covered that earlier, those 1 to 45 trademark classifications for goods and services. So, and how that works is if you register an Australian trademark and then you want to register in America as well, the classification systems will align because both Australia and uh, United States use the NICE classification system. So everything aligns nicely, and I believe about 145 other uh, countries use that, or maybe 145 in total, uh, use that classification system for international trademarks. Obviously, if you're registering from Australia, you want to use it in Australia. First, you need to register in Australia through IP Australia, and you'll need to pay the fee. So let's look at the registration steps right now. Okay, so once we file that trademark application, we can go ahead and register the overseas trademark, let's say in the United States, for example. And to do that, what you can do is go to trademarks, apply for an international trademark, and then go down to take a trademark overseas. Okay, so then we come through to the World Intellectual Property Organization or WIPO's e-filing, which uses the Madrid protocol, which allows us to uh, apply from IP Australia, what's integrated with IP Australia. And what we can do is put our reference in here after we file with Australia, import the basic application registration, which populates a lot of these fields. And then you can go through the steps, um, calculate fees and validate uh, the application and process it that way. IP Australia will check off on everything and then they'll send it through to the corresponding office. In this case, if we apply to America, for example, for Technico. I hope this has been interesting in learning how to file with IP Australia and with WIPO as well. I hope you found this presentation interesting. If you have, uh, please like it if you're watching on YouTube and leave a comment, ask any questions you wish. If you're watching it on my website, uh, use the contact form to get in contact if you have any trademark questions. Have a great day and I look forward to bringing you the next video.